the display is kind of weird. Oh, it works now. Uh, by the way, I love Babel, and uh, I'm a little bit of a late adopter, but you know, after two days of using Babel, I, I just couldn't go back anymore. And uh, I was like, there's no way I'm going to write the normal JavaScript anymore. No way. It's like uh, coffee script, the good parts, basically. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Boy. All right. So the state of animation in <laughs> React. All right. Last time I'm going to do this, I promise. Um, I started my career with Flash. I wasn't a coder back then. Um, I was just literally some kid dragging and dropping some keyframes in Flash and making twins manually and setting up the curves and making some small animations. And back then, it was really easy. It didn't require any code, basically. You could put some you know, stop, go to, and play this frame in, in the in the timeline directly, and there's like global mutable state uh, everywhere, and it was really dirty, but it got the job done. And uh, I, as a matter of fact, I remember very fondly one of the first questions, and this is not a lie, one of the first questions that came to me when I first saw Facebook back then is, um, you know, why isn't it made in Flash? That was re really naive, and I think like, I still have this kind of mentality. It's very naive, but I would like to see that. Uh, I'm, I don't mean like um, pervasive animation like these all the time, but like at least a little bit more interactivity so that the web as an app platform doesn't still look like you know, um, pages and pages of PDF document linked with like blue links, right? So someone agrees with me, right? Awesome, talk to me later. <laughs> so two years ago, I stumbled upon React by accident and uh, of course, I felt like it was the right paradigm from, uh, from the beginning, but there's one important question, an obvious one. Um, this is one of the first animation issues, if, if not their first animation issue about React. And uh, I was basically contributing to this bootstrap example, and I realized it's really in inconvenient. Uh, we c React is good enough to wrap these kind of things in animation APIs like uh, Velocity or jQuery. But ultimately, it didn't feel very React, and maybe that is the wrong thing, maybe that is not. Um, so ever since then, in my spare time, I've been trying a few animation APIs, looking into the other alternatives, getting inspirations from Flash and et cetera. Um, and um, I think today I will present you to some of my findings. Uh, you might find them interesting. So and I want to do, know how to do it in React. And, Spencer had a talk yesterday. Spencer is a colleague of mine, and we talked a little bit on like, how to make this work, because we don't want to start on the wrong foot by releasing you know, two animation libraries. Imagine if there are like, two React routers or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, his library is, um, gets, it, it's performant, at least relatively speaking. It is performant, and it can be even more performant. It's very pragmatic and realistic. Like You can see how you do things, and if, if the need ever arises, you can drop to the more imperative level and do your dirty manipulation to get the job done, which is uh, the most important part. I, on the other hand, I am more interested in some of the more abstract attributes of animation and tweening, um, and you will see that very soon, what I mean. And uh, a little bit of, um, of a warning before going, uh, going into the actual animation API. Uh, React is not done. Right? We're at a very good place right now, but React, it's only been two years in the open source. And as such, animation, like the exploration of the animation API is not done. Uh, there are huge libraries like GreenSocks that are just dedicated to animating things. And what we're trying to do here is basically saying, you know what, we can do almost like 90% of these use cases, we can reduce them into one single component. This is very hard and it might not be realistic, we'll see. So the two aspects I want to focus on in this, this talk is first, how to declaratively express twins. Uh, as little state as possible, as little um, imperative manipulation in the lifecycle events as possible. Uh, I am not trying to solve making 30 second animation and a scene you know, on, on the web. Or There are other APIs for this. And uh, I feel like for these kind of things, for these kind of more imperative way of doing things, it is already a solved problem, so it doesn't interest me, and people have solved it better than I ever could. 
And the second aspect I want to talk about is this. Right. Thanks to uh, Dan on Twitter for providing me the picture. Uh, notice the very nice touch on the art that surpasses the border to indicate it's actually good CSS. Now, uh, more seriously, I need to find a good API for unmounting. And you need to realize something beforehand is that unmounting animation and animation in general are two different things. Unmounting is really a React specific problem right now. Um, you keep a node around even though in the next render you basically said, you know what, the node actually doesn't exist anymore. And uh, this, this basically has nothing to do with animation, right? But we bundled them together, and this is what I'm going to do too. We bundled them together because usually you do that because you want to animate something before actually killing the node. But these are two separate problems. So a little bit of prior art. Uh, we have CSS transition on the web, right? I don't think it's enough, and I will explain to you why I started the exploration of animation, um, because it's not enough. So first, a big flaw in CSS transition is that it's mostly time-based. And uh, when you talk about time-based things and when you hard-code a value of, like, say, 500 milliseconds into your tween, um, it doesn't vary or anything. You have to do dirty manipulation if you want to change the time. But why would you want to change the time in the first place? Well, here I'll quote someone who's uh, much more experienced and has more, much more credibility than me. He is the former engineer on UIKit at Apple, and he basically says, animation APRs, uh, APIs parameterized by, for example, duration and curve are fundamentally opposed to continuous fluid interactivity. Because think about it a little bit. Let's say you have a menu deploy animation, and uh, this is the final destination, and this is 500 milliseconds, right? And halfway, the user clicks on something, and you toggle it back to its initial hidden state. So why should this way back also be 500 milliseconds, right? What should the curve even be? Is it, sh is it supposed to be a normal, so like ease out animation, easing, whatever, linear? It's not very clear. And the second thing about like, CSS animation is that it's very hard to control. Uh, it, you don't have a, a, actually a dedicated API for, say, uh, pausing or rewinding if you ever need. And the reading into the value, right? Because right now it's like a black box. You set the final state, and somehow the thing just animates for you. So a little bit of thought experiment for you. What if you do like the arm um, thing, arm um, um, to do MVC thing, where you freeze that? Uh, your uh, API, oh, sorry, freeze your application midway. Can you read into that value or can you not read into that value? Can you serialize your application state? Uh, with CSS animation, unfortunately, you can't right now. And also, reliance on DOM, it's a, it's a big, mm, big no for me because we want this to be cross platform for one. And also, you, you can have a nice API, but like, you know, from, <laughs> from experience, you can have a nice API and you attach the DOM to the DOM and everything just. It's like poison that spreads, basically. It's like, uh, I have such a nice thing, but now it's, it's not nice anymore. It's mutative, and it's hard to control, and it's not nice. But that being said, there are some good parts to the CSS transition API and uh, the keyframe API. It is very performant. This is, um, it's, it's kind of hard, hard to beat. The browser vendors are basically cheating. They, they said, you know, we could use the GPU for this, and they're right. It is very performant. And uh, if my animation API ever runs at 10 frames per second, I'd rather just use a less fancy CSS animation and do my whatever uh, dirty manipulation I need to get the job done. It is good enough with a common task in the sense that you, know, you get 80% done by, with 20% of the effort. And for, for, uh, for those animation where you just, it's kind of uh, in the fire and forget model, which is like, for example, Instagram, where you double tap on a picture, there's a heart that uh, pops up, and that's it. Like uh, a second after, you don't see it anymore, you don't care anymore. Uh, this is a good model for it. So without further ado, um, here is the first demo of the new declarative API um, I've made. Chat heads, all right? Um, these are actually the usual div you use to, you know, style your navigation bar or whatever, and uh, it's crazy how far we've come, basically. Um, this is using purely spring-based animation, and the, the code is like actually, the actual significant amount of code is less than 10 lines, I would say. Um, the source is online, I will post a link later. 
And uh, as you can see, uh, I have a, a few tricks up my sleeve. Um, I have this one uh, hack button here, which when I press it, it slows down everything. So it looks like this. <laughs> so now you can actually see the curve. I'm going to accelerate. Um, when I point here, it goes here, but when I come back here, it actually drags things, and the second one is dragged by the first one, third one is dragged by the second one, and you basically get staggered animation for free. And staggered animation in general is something that you think would be hard-coded. Uh, you know, um, 100 milliseconds after the first one, let's fire the second one, and then let's fire the third one. But here, you get it naturally from the physics of the spring. And the final destination of the second um, chat head is simply the current destination of the first one. There's really nothing more to that. All right. Pretty cool. I could play with this for days. <sighs> so back to the slides. Now, here are my uh, more specific criteria for these kind of declarative twins. Uh, they must be interruptible, right? They must be concurrent. They must be composable. It's, uh, it's still very general, but still, these are the criteria I have. And uh, uninterruptible animation, I feel like it's more a, of a liability than anything else. Uh, it's, it's my, it might be better if you don't have animation at all, rather than having an um, like uninterruptible animation that lasts for like one second, during which the, the user can't click on anything. Congruent means many at the same time. So one of my first uh, public experiment, uh, experiment on this, you might have seen it, it's called Twin State. Uh, it's basically a mixing, a very simple mixing that does uh, one thing. Uh, it injects this method called Twin State into your component. So instead of set state, you say Twin State, and you pass the, the key you want, and then you pass a configuration object. The, the API is not very relevant here, but you get the idea. And it basically twins this thing from one place to another instead of directly setting it um, discreetly. And uh, just to put a little bit of a spin on this, um, I put additive animation, which is the iOS 8's new default into twin states. And the blue ball, uh, the, the blue cube is the additive animation's effect. The yellow one is the normal uh, animation you would get on the web right now. As you can see, the second one is much smoother for zero cost. It basically says, you know, we have these two curves together. One is like this, one is like this, and we're going to use the power of math to blind, blind, uh, blend these two together and make a smooth curve. So you get this for free for Twin State. It's just a really nice thing to have for free, basically. You get like a physics effect, even though if you're just using, you know, um, easing out. Here's the API. Uh, it's still pretty low level, right? Uh, it's a mixing, so and mixing are getting deprecated, so we got to find a better way to do this. But that was a long time ago. And so you have this duration and curve here, which are a little bit uncomfortable. And like I said, uh, I don't want them there at all. Um, and I think today I found something maybe strictly better than Twin State. And as you saw in the first demo, uh, it's a spring. It's nothing but one single spring with like configurable parameters. So spring have uh, some nice properties to them. For one, they basically say, you know, I don't care about the current position. Give me the final value. I know what the current momentum is. I, I know all the, the, the stuff that's happening. Give me the final value, and I will do my best to emulate physics and like, actually give you a real curve. You guys saw that in the, in the demo uh, from Spencer yesterday, basically. Uh, I don't think I need to go into too much into that. And uh, basically, the parameters uh, which have good defaults in my library uh, is the stiffness and damping. If you provide your stiffness, uh, stiffness and damping to this component, you will actually animate as if you're manipulating a spring. Sorry. Testing? Oh. I can't hear the difference, sorry. <laughs> so here's the API. Uh, it's worse? Oh, too close. Oh, oops. I thought I was, OK. Um, so here's the API of the spring. Uh, you, you have values which represent the final value. And the final value, basically, you can pass a nested object. So this is the most basic level, right? This is the, a good default, in my opinion. And here's something very interesting. It has nothing to do with animation. But basically, uh, you, as a tr you pass a children callback, which 
you, in which you receive the current value that's being interpolated. In this case, it will be the object with top, let's say, equal to 5.56 or something like that. And you render it. And basically, in the background, in the, in the spring component, I do a request animation frame for you until we're done. And you can use this simple number to do something. In this case, it's the necessary object. Uh, what if you want a better API? What if you want to find a control over this? Right? You don't want to animate left. You only want to animate the top value. I let you keep your data structure, and I, pass, uh, I ask you to pass me a function uh, with a twin, and the twin basically is a marker that says, you know, which, which property I want to animate, and I will animate that whole subtree of uh, nested stuff. And of course, you can get more powerful than that. The, third, uh, the second and third parameters are stiffness and damping. You can play around with it, basically. All right, another demo. You guys like demos, right? Um, so, this is the most <laughs> anticlimactic demo ever. Look, it's a counter. <laughs> All right, next demo. <laughs> um, this is basically twin state, uh, what I talked about, right? So, the first one is the really dumb animation. Don't ever use that, please. Second one is the CSS animation. And the third one is the additive one with the same curve as the second one. And as you can see, there's a little bit of physics property to it. They finish and start at the same time. But it, it feels like more real. And you get it for free. All right, more demo. I basically, co basically copied Spencer on this one. Um, he agreed that it's OK, I think. So, and also, to, for eye candy, I kind of put a dash of a uh, fake dynamic shadow in there for fun. And the code for this is actually, like I promised, very declarative, very concise. You specify the final position, and somehow everything just works. Um, I know someone in the audience right now is screaming, you know, let's do the slow motion thing. So let's do the slow motion thing. Right? They all work. There is no bug possible if you write it in this way. They are all concurrent. Pretty cool, huh? And uh, back to reality. All right. That's the second demo. Cool. So with this, you can actually do layout animation because you're just using numbers, right? And we're st strictly in JavaScript land. And, and layout animation, for, uh, there's a good library for that called CSS layout that you guys probably all know. Um, basically gives you flexbox in JavaScript, so you can do all the dirty manipulation. It's basically absolute positioning, right? You can read into the value, like I said, which is very important. And now we're at amounting twins, um, the big problem in React, basically. So ordinary animation is easy because when you think about it, uh, you have the previous render tree, you have the next render tree, and there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between this node and the next node. So it's very easy to, to you know, map and uh, interpolate. But what if the tree looks different? Now it's harder, and I actually think this might be one of the worst case scenario for React. Uh, somebody please prove me wrong. Um, and mounting animation here are the criteria still. Interruptible, concurrent, composable, basically, uh, what's not a CSS transition right now. Um, the opposite of CSS transition group. Um, uh, the problem with the current CSS transition group is that it's uninterruptible. There's only one in and out configuration. It's kind of buggy. Uh, not much control over the things. So I, I think like a demo speaks better <laughs> than words. So here's a, a new demo. I basically took to do MVC, and I said, you know what? Let's literally just put anim an mounting animation on it. Um, okay. So, and also, uh, when I type, I actually filter it through the list to, just to show you some better animation, I guess. Uh, let's let's try PL. PL should match the first element plane. Look, they actually unmount, and they come back. And if you press the slow motion key, let's say I, I push on the demo, right? Demo. And uh, when you de-amount, it actually transitions back. <laughs> These nodes keep their state until they transition back. It's actually the same node. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty fun, I guess. <laughs> And I, I feel like, as an aside, this should probably be the new benchmark for to do MVC. 
Uh, to do MVC is kind of representative in some way of uh, the current state of JavaScript frameworks. And if you don't put actual animation on it, I feel like we're uh, very static to do. This is not a way to go, maybe. Uh, that's just my personal opinion, though. So the, the API actually looks like this for, for the spring. So it's a superset of, trans, uh, of the, the normal spring. It's a transition spring. Uh, you might be familiar with this API a little bit if you use transition group already. So you know, value is the final value still. Um, I pass a function, doesn't matter what it is. Will leave gives you will leave, will enter gives you will enter, and this is basically it. And uh, further down the line, you, ha you see will leave, I basically pass you the key that's currently amounting. Key is very important, that's the identity of the components. And if you, according to some criteria, you want to make it actually disappear right now, you just return null, otherwise you return a data structure that I will merge back into your values correctly and then you could keep animating in the current value children callback. I think it's actually pretty intuitive to work this way. Uh, it just merges back, and you can specify your merging algorithm. You get, basically get lots of power. All right, demo, just full of demos. Demo four, let's go. Oh, it's actually still transitioning. Let's stop this. Oh, and uh, of course, all, all these um, just work naturally, right? Active, completed, you know, and you can create items. Huh? I think it's broken. <laughs> oh, no, it's in active, sorry. Hey, all right. <laughs> Demo number four. So this is a little photo gallery application I create, uh, uh, view I created. This, when you drag this, it's going to switch photo, but it's going to switch photo in a very nice way, design-ish way. Look. And uh, you basically get this for free. Try to do that in CSS animation, by the way. If you can do it, like, uh, tell me. Anyone want to see the slow motion button? <laughs> Yay. Slow motion button is actually pretty cool on this one. Look. Uh, it just transitions correctly. It's pretty cool. Look. Whoa. <laughs> No more demos, actually, sorry. Aw, oh, five more minutes still. Now the big question is performance. How performant is this? I personally prefer, like I said, dumb 60 frames per second animation rather than a fancy one that, lasts 10, uh, that has like 10 frames per second. And ultimately, you're still re-rendering this nested tree at 60 times per second, which is expensive. Um, Spencer's version is more constrained in a good way, in the sense that with that constrained API, he can actually compile to you know, core animation or refer to CSS keyframe uh, under the hood. Mine can't. Uh, this, is, this is the truth. But maybe if I constrain the API, maybe I can. But maybe it's not a good idea to constrain the API too much. We don't know yet. So we're going to find out. So please file some issues so that we can know what you actually want, what, are, what, are, what your 90% use case looks like. Um, I kind of lied that there's no more demo. <laughs> um, so here's what I find to be the one more thing of uh, animation demos. I also kind of lied when I said there is more animation uh, demos. There is none. Um, it's just a twist on the current demos. So let's go back to demo number one. I have more than one hack key, actually. I have a few hack keys. Uh, anybody know Brad Victor? My hero, man. <laughs> and uh, he basically said animation is something, uh, it's not just animation in general. A processing time, it's very hard for humans to visualize uh, because it's a processing time. And it's, uh, the better way to do it would be to map time to space, right? How do you map time to space for animation? Anybody, anybody work with uh, Flash Onion Skin before? All right, look at this now. So you can basically see all the current position how the next 10 or 20 current position my thing is going to be at. And uh, if you put this with like slow motion, it gives you like this. You don't see the, you, you don't see the frames anymore because like they are all very close to each other. But this is basically the effect, right? Pretty smooth, huh? All right. And uh, you want to see something even better than this? <laughs> Running out of time, though. <laughs> All right, let's see for the, no, this is bad, this is bad. Let, let's close them. Nobody wants to see a uh, like counter duplicating itself. So let's see it for this one, look. 
Now with the slowdown, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, well, actually, you, st you still don't, don't see much, I guess. But look, uh, very expensive motion blur. <laughs> All right, uh, let's skip this one, and uh, let's do this one uh, very quickly, I guess. Whoa, what's happening here? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Let's do this all over again with the hack number three. <laughs> hack number three is a spin on the, to, uh, the arm undo thing. So look, what is this? Can anybody imagine what this is? It's a slider. All right, let's press it. This is the previous state of the animation. <laughs> so when I mean more abstract research, I mean it. <laughs> So this is the next, the future of your animation. You should start from this point onward. Um, you can put this back, I guess. And uh, let's do it on this one, and uh, let's just finish with this one. Two, three. OK, this is animation, getting used to it, right? All right, let's see what happens. Well, it's kind of predictable. Look, and you can interrupt here, and uh, you probably can drag things here. And it'll look like this. It's kind of hard to visualize after a little while, but you're basically changing, changing the future here. Uh, <laughs> right? That doesn't make much sense in uh, real life. <laughs> this is a hack, right? <laughs> but the code is actually surprisingly clean. Um, it's very simple. I, instead of doing this in request animation frame, in the render function, I basically take the next 10 uh, elements and reduce it into one single uh, thing on the current render. Out of time, almost. Um, oops. By the way, I need to thank Dan and Benjamin and uh, Sunil and Dustin and uh, whole, uh, the whole React team for uh, letting me do these kind of stuff. Uh, if there are a few more uh, open issue on React bugs that, that are not solved. It's probably my fault for fiddling with these kind of stuff instead of actually being productive and fixing React bugs. Um, animation so far hasn't been easy, really. Uh, it's, um, it's something that we're still trying to explore because it's Reac under React's new paradigm. And uh, y you know, what's the future of these APIs? I can, I can give you a glimpse of some of the other experiments I made. What if instead of one set state, you do set states, and you pass an infinite stream of all the states you want to set. So with this API, you basically get full power over you know, what you want. It's basically flash animation frames, right? All right, not, not too much on this one. And uh, Dan basically on Twitter uh, posted something really funny. Um, he basically said, you know what, I'm going to put my two animation states in an array, literally, and I'm going to pass it, say, to a component, and the component will take the first state, and then, then the next frame, it's going to take the second state, and with the CSS transition, and with React's reconciler, this actually just works. And uh, as a closing thought, um, I have no regret deprecating my API right now. This is all online, live right now. Uh, I will polish the readme uh, tonight. But if someone here can present me a better API, I am ready to deprecate this API tonight or tomorrow. I'm very serious about this. And <laughs> because, like I said, animation is not done, and I don't want to cargo code on, like, you know, oh, spring animation, this is the future of everything now. Uh, I don't want that to happen. And, uh, and it's very hard to see what's beyond if we're satisfied with the current state of animation right now. And uh, this whole demo, which is very light on code snippet, is an uh, indication for you to, to see what's beyond just normal CSS transitions right now and uh, propose APIs, especially for unmounting APIs. People wrap velocity and jQuery all the time, but for unmounting, I haven't seen many that solve that problem. So please file an issue here, and uh, I will do my best to respond to you. Thank you.